Hey guys, hello, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Steven. You made to the top of Eleanor right there. Uh, Buddy is over in a cardboard box uh, on my bed and I just heard Claire jump up on top of one of her cat trees. <laughs> hey Claire, 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 Claire Bear. Yes, you, hi honey. Uh, so hi, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my little family here. Uh, if you're new to my channel, welcome, double welcome. Um, so um, I received, uh, uh, over the past couple of years, I've received the same general question a handful of times, nothing crazy uh, that seemed to require its own separate video. But recently, I think it was either a comment under a video or potentially an email uh, from a young man uh, who asked about having cats particularly as a reserve flight attendant. What did I think? Um, what was my experience like? And I figured this would be a great topic for a video, pets and being a flight attendant, in particular, a reserve flight attendant. So I'll share a little bit, tiny bit, just a few seconds of my experience in, in the position I was in at the time uh, when I was really thinking about having a pet. Uh, I had been a flight attendant for about six months, seven months, uh, so, yeah, seven or eight months when I moved into this apartment. It's a studio apartment. It's about 470 square feet, including my very large closet. Um, I don't know why the closet's so big for a studio this small, but um, I, I had this big apartment to myself. And when I came home from a trip, I was kind of craving something alive in my apartment besides a spider plant. You know, I wanted something alive to have a little responsibility for something but to have something moving living breathing in my apartment and so i started to think about what kind of pets i could have as a flight attendant uh, a reserve flight attendant um, that required um, not a lot of space that didn't require a lot of personal attention because i'd be gone from home quite often that didn't require to be fed that often because once again I went home that often or I wasn't um, and uh, so you know those those sorts of ideas and so I started looking at pets uh, and their different requirements and I started looking at the big three for me the big three for me was number one a tarantula fuzzy cute I think they're cute uh, but as much as you can hold them I really don't think they're cuddly um, scorpions. I thought a scorpion would be a great pet, uh, especially um, thematically appropriate as I live in Las Vegas. I live in the desert, so I figured a scorpion would be the perfect pet. Um, scorpions and tarantulas only have to eat maybe once every four or five days, maybe once a week, maybe less often. Actually, I was just watching a YouTube video recently um, about uh, larger spiders, and they may only have to eat once a month or whatever. I guess each spider is different. I don't know. I was also looking at snakes uh, and it seemed like my decision would have to be between a corn snake and I think it's called a ball python. I really haven't looked into it uh, because I have three cats now so snakes are just not going to be up my alley. Um, so I started looking at those three pets. I certainly was not looking at owning a cat or being responsible for a cat because I don't think you can really own a cat. Um, so I started looking at those three animals and I was really sort of trying really hard to decide. I was leaning towards the scorpion because I thought they were cool looking um, and their food source was relatively easy to uh, to maintain but just blah blah blah. It seemed like a real simple animal to keep and so I thought I'm gonna get a scorpion. Around that time, <laughs> around that time, I recognized my neighbors were leaving bits and pieces of really strange pieces of food outside their door. One neighbor in particular, uh, who's close by to my apartment, would leave like a chicken wing out there. Uh, one day there'd be like half a sausage in a bowl. And I was like, who, what does she think is, there aren't, aren't, I don't think there's raccoons out here in Vegas. I don't think there's any animal that really would eat a sausage. Uh, there's certainly no stray dogs running around. So uh, I figured out she's feeding or trying to leave something out for, a, there's a bunch of stray cats in my apartment complex. There's there were probably a dozen at the time. Uh, and so she was leaving us these pieces of food out for the cats and I, I've come to discover my cats at least won't eat a chicken wing or got a sausage. 
my cats would look at a sausage, get close to it, go, oh, that's what they would do to a sausage. Um, so I started putting food out for these stray cats. Uh, and one cat in particular used to come to my apartment uh, seemingly for uh, as much for attention as for food. And that is this jerk. <laughs> buddy uh my bad boyfriend he is uh the love of my life i would take a bullet for that cat i love him i also hate him sometimes but buddy would come up and eat uh and then after a week or so two weeks he would let me start to pet him uh and we started to develop this little relationship this little understanding uh, and i found it really interesting because i've always lived with dogs they were always other people's dogs i always had roommates uh they were never my dogs um, I haven't had a cat since I was a child and I don't even remember having them. Um, so my relationship with Buddy was that of, he was a stray cat, I would feed him, I'd pet him once in a while and that's it. Uh, over the course of maybe another couple weeks, Buddy started to kind of wander into my apartment. I was fine with that. Uh, I ended up buying him some cat beds and a lot of cat food that he ignored completely. Uh, I had to, it was a struggle to find the one cat food that they really do eat. Um, and then I met Eleanor, and then I met Claire. The Eleanor and Claire, the two girls, uh, were both uh, sick. Eleanor was almost dying. Uh, Claire was very, very, very sick. And I figured in each of their cases, I would just take them in for a little bit because Buddy did not want company besides me um, and just get them better and then find a forever home for them. And I did right here in this apartment with me and Buddy. Uh, so um, I went from wanting a scorpion to having three cats. That was a surprise to me as it was to anybody. Uh, so why do I think, and I have come to this decision, that cats really are the ideal pet for a flight attendant for a single, I'm gonna die alone. I'm not, I'm never gonna have another boyfriend um, or husband um, because I look like this and I have three cats. It's just not gonna happen. Um, and I'm fine, I have three cats, I don't need a boy. Um, so why do I think cats are the perfect pet, especially for a single flight attendant who's potentially on reserve? Because June, I'll be on reserve again. Um, all right, so reasons. They take off all of the boxes I initially set for having pets. They don't take a lot of maintenance. So maintenance for these cats. Um, I empty their litter box once every day or two when I'm home. Uh, but, you know, I'm gone for work for three up to four days. Usually about 72, 78 hours, depending uh, on the trip. But I'm usually gone for at least three days in a row. Uh, and so when I come home, I just empty out their litter boxes. I have three litter boxes for them. Uh, and, and each of them seem to use a different one. So that's fine with me. Um, so I clean the litter box out maybe once or twice a day when I'm home. I'm sorry, once every day or two when I'm home or at least every three or four days if I've been flying away. And they seem to be fine. My three cats were all strays. So they weren't particularly um, finicky about their litter boxes. If it's a brand new cat or a cat from a shelter or someone else's home, that cat might require um, uh, more maintenance for the litter, litter boxes. But my cats... Um, seem to be fine with the setup we have right now. Um, the, uh, yeah, so they don't need a lot of require, um, requisite in terms of maintenance for their poop and stuff. Uh, for food, now I bought this, and I'm going to put a link in the description box uh, below for the set that I bought when I first got Buddy. When I only had Buddy, I ended up with this uh, feeder. This is the gravity feeder. Ta-da! It holds about three pounds of dry food, and they one at their only dry food they eat is uh, it's a Purina One Tender Selects with chicken. I think that's it. It's in a turquoise bag, uh, but it's um, this little gravity feeder. I had one from Walmart. I bought as well. I think I got this at Walmart. It's this one, um, this one. I don't like this one at all. I keep it because it's a second bowl and I'll put food in there. But this one, you have to literally take the whole container off, turn it upside down, fill it, turn it back upside down. And it, I get cat food all over the place. It's a mess. This one, you just lift the lid off the top, pop, 
fill it and set it aside. So the food that goes in here, it's about three pounds of food. And I only have to fill this once every, once a week, if that, I think maybe more often. Um, and all three of my cats eat out of this, um, this uh, container here. So super low maintenance there. Um, I had a, I have, um, one of the gravity water feeders, the water bowls that's kind of like this, you'll see what's in the um, in the link on the description box below. It's an Amazon link. There's a water fountain kind of thing, a gravity fed water bowl with the gravity fed uh, dry food feeder. I also have uh, a whole video set aside just about cat a, a water fountain for cats. Um, I have I have four. If you only have one or two cats, you could probably just have one of these fountains, but my cats are spoiled. Um, I have four of these water fountains, uh, and my cats drink out of all four of them. Uh, they seem to like this most recent one, the blue top with the, the LED light on it. They seem to like that one more. Um, but I have these cat water fountains, uh, and they hold about three liters each. So I can fill it before I leave for a trip. I'm gonna come home for the trip. There's usually plenty of water in there, so I can usually forget about it for another day or two. But I refill it once a week, uh, and then every week or two, I'll siphon out water, um, uh, put more water in there, just so that if there's any evaporation, that that water isn't getting harder and harder with minerals and stuff. And then once a month or every other month, I change the filter. Super easy, almost no maintenance. So the, the, the box for easy to feed, check, done. Um, so they, they, they don't require a lot of space, my cats. Uh, and I really felt bad having the three cats in a, a 470 square, square foot apartment. I felt bad for a long time about having three cats in this amount of space. I thought they really required more space. Uh, and they seem, they seem really happy for the most part, Claire and Eleanor don't go outside. So they've both been in my apartment here for a year and they don't seem crazy. <laughs> they, um, Claire is particularly chill. She is always Mrs. Chill. Um, Eleanor is a little busybody and she likes to enter, tries to entertain herself a little bit more often. But having three cats in the space that I have doesn't seem to be a problem. And I think primarily that's mostly because the whole apartment, as you see, is dedicated to my cats. I don't have a lot of surface space, but I, where I don't have a lot of area, I went vertical in this case. Um, I also have cat beds on my bed. <laughs> so I went over the top. But if I only had one or two cats, I think a small studio apartment would be fine too. So they don't require a lot of space. They don't require, require a lot of maintenance. My cats, two of my cats, really love attention and interaction. Claire is really chill. She's kind of chill. She, she'll let you scratch her, but she's she's fine by herself. Uh, she'll come up when she wants attention. She'll come up and she'll lay down next to me. But Claire and um, Eleanor and Buddy are really have a lot of personality and are very dynamic. So um, uh, between the three of them, they all have different personalities. I get all of the satisfaction of cuddling and loving and being loved and cuddled by these cats. I've never knew I was missing this quality of, of sort of yumminess that I have with, with my cats. So they really check all the boxes off for me. So I'm gonna be on reserve in June. So I set up my, I bid for a reserve schedule where I'm going to be on reserve, on notification, so my crew scheduling can call me from 2 p.m. until midnight. So I chose that one because Buddy likes to go outside in the morning for a couple hours, and he can come on in when he wants to, and that's usually about two or three hours, sometimes as much as four or five hours, depending on the weather outside. But he can do what he wants to, and when he's ready to come back in, uh, he comes back in the apartment. We can all just take another nap, because I really don't sleep well when he's outside. Uh, and then 
we have a great time together. Uh, at midnight, I can go to sleep and the day all starts over again. But if crew scheduling were to call me at 2.30 in the afternoon and say, hey, Stephen, we have a three-day trip for you. You're going to be flying off to Baltimore and blah, blah, blah. Um, I have no problem because I have three pounds of cat food. Uh, that they all enjoy and for some reason they really do seem to self monitor their eating uh, none of my cats are obese or, or um, overeat they just eat as much as they want and then they stop um, I can just make sure that the uh, food uh, container is full I make sure the water fountains are completely full I do have the um, gravity fed water thing still in my apartment I still have that just in case the power goes out, I don't want these water fountains to sort of just stop working and have the cats be without water entirely. So lots of water in this apartment for the cats. Um, again, it's a dry environment in Las Vegas. So I want to make sure that they're hydrated so that their urinary tracts are healthy and all that. But And their cat and their litter boxes are scooped. But the main that takes about five minutes <laughs> to really make sure. I scoop out the litter boxes, I fill the, the uh, food food things, uh, and make sure the fountains are, are full of water. That's it. It takes about five or six minutes for me to, to do those things. I get ready for work. I give all the cats a little goodbye, a little bit of love. I leave the house knowing I'm going to leave the window open uh, because it's their TV. They look like to look outside. And I put the radio on. Nothing crazy, just a little bit of noise in here so it's not just dead silent. Um, and that's it. And I can leave the house really comfortable in knowing that there's three cats. And this is something I didn't mention earlier. There's three of them. They all have very distinct personalities. Eleanor and Claire like to play. They like to play fight once in a while. But they will play with each other once in a while when they're bored. They keep each other entertained. Buddy, when he's here by himself, he's just chill. He'd like, he'll, he'll watch the two girls play and, and roughhouse. He'll just watch from his perch and just judge from a distance. Um, so the three of them are fine. They have toys all over the place. In the bathtub, I put a couple ping pong balls. I have a, a stopper in there so a ping pong ball doesn't get stuck in the drain. Uh, ping pong balls, a couple hair ties, uh, my rubber ducky <laughs> I've had for decades and buddy just loves to bite its bill um i leave those things in the tub they have their toys they have plenty of food and water um i keep the air at about 78 in my apartment for them when i'm away and that's it i leave knowing that they can enjoy themselves and have fun they're fine when i come home they're fine uh no worries now compare that to a dog now compare that to a dog. I would love a dog. Now, I would take a bullet for my cat. I, buddy, I would take a bullet for him. Would I take a bullet for Claire or Eleanor? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I love, I do love Buddy more than I love the other cats. It's just, I don't know. I, he's my first, he's my boyfriend. He's my true love. Um, I love my other cats. I do, I desperately love them. But Buddy's my, my, boy, my boyfriend. Um, Compare that to having a dog, uh, especially as a single person. Uh, there's no one here to, uh, I would have to have someone come in here every single day to walk the dog for it to go out and do its business once or twice a day, depending on the dog's needs, right? Uh, I couldn't put a, a little dog in my apartment with a pee pad and hope that that pee pad took care of everything for three or four days. That just wouldn't happen. So I'd have to have someone come in here get the dog, have it go for a walk like twice a day, and then have enough dog food and enough water. I'm sure that's easy to handle with these kind of gravity fed things. But dogs need a lot of attention. Uh, cats need attention too, but I have three of them. Um, so dogs just need a lot more emotional uh, investment, I think, than a cat. Um, they're, just, they're not equal. They're totally different. And I, as much as I love dogs, I love dogs. I think I was, I was about to say this. As much as I love Buddy, I love my cat Buddy, and I love my other cats. I have always been a dog person. 
before I was a cat daddy. I I love dogs. I want to cry when I see a super cute. I want to eat super cute little dogs. I can't. Um, but uh, so a dog would not be a good fit for me. If I had a husband and a family uh, or a roommate who I really trusted, who was okay with the responsibility of taking care of a dog when I wasn't home, then that might be fine. But and I'll tell you for, for a fact, that dog would be the other person's dog because they're home every day when I would be gone for three or four days at a time. So I'd be like that auntie that showed up once in a while, you know, I wouldn't be like the, their main person. And I need to be that that animal's person. I can't be an auntie to a dog or a cat. I need to be the person because I'm just an egotistical, childish, grandiose, emotionally insecure person. Um, so a dog is off the table. A dog is off the table for me because I just don't have the, the support network for a dog. Um, and I really do need to be that dog's person. I can't be the person who shows up once or twice a week. You know, I just can't. So I think cats are really the perfect pet for a flight attendant. And I, um, I want to stress that, you know, um, I would, one cat, I guess is fine. Would I ever have one cat? No. Um, having one cat, especially if I'm gone for three or four days at a time, feels like cruelty to me. I think that just sounds cruel to have one cat sit in an apartment by itself for three or four days. I just think it sounds cruel. I would have to have another cat um, so that we, there would at least be two. There'd be some sort of interaction and, um, you know, uh, yeah, interaction uh, with a, uh, a relationship. That's the word. There'd have to be some sort of relationship for that cat with another cat. I don't think they're, they're made uh, to be isolated by themselves. Um, now, I think the perfect number of cats is three, uh, because any binary relationship, any relationship where there's two people revolve around each other, eventually I would become, uh, maybe this is reading into my relationship with my ex-husband, but if it's just two of us circling around each other, eventually I'm going to get really, really irritated with him. Uh, and sometimes I'm going to hate him and sometimes I'm going to love him, but it's going to be a very dramatic relationship. Uh, now with three cats, there seems to be a sort of a hierarchy between the three of them, and there's definitely much more a rich relationship with the three of them all revolving around each other. It's a much more intricate, I think, emotional environment for my cats. Um, that's just how I feel. Uh, I've had one cat with just Buddy, and when I came home from uh, a trip, he would be like, wah, wah, I'm so sad. He literally would whine. When I got Eleanor, he hated Eleanor, but he didn't seem so wah when I came home. And then when I added Claire to the mix, um, Eleanor hated Claire, but he didn't give a poop. Um, but now that I've had the three of them in the house, to see them all interacting at different times, and they just all seem to be happier and healthier with three. So three cats seems to be the magic number for me, and I'm talking much longer than I expected to. Um, not a surprise to anybody who's watched my videos. Now, is three cats easier? I'm, I'm going to ruin the surprise. Why am I even drawing this up? Three cats is just as easy to maintain as one cat. That's just my experience. It takes about 45 seconds more to scoop out their litter box. It doesn't take any time at all. It takes no time to put extra food out. Um, the only time it takes more effort to actually have three cats than one cat is when I go to the bathroom. When I go to the bathroom, not the cats. When I go to the bathroom, if I have to go in the toilet and sit down, not to overshare, but if I go to the bathroom and sit down with my cell phone or a book, <laughs> forget it, forget it. I have three cats who all suddenly get along really well. And they all want to cram into my tiny bathroom and they all want attention. They all want love. They all want to smell. They want to do this. They all want to play in the bathtub because I put toys in there for them. Um, I, it's a circus. When I go to the bathroom, sometimes I have to sneak into the bathroom to do my business because I don't always want three cats. If you have children, you know what I'm talking about. Um, or cats. 
So the only time having multiple cats is more work is when I want to go to the bathroom by myself. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just as easy to have three cats as it is to have one. It really is. And I find it to be much more satisfying. I love all the personalities and I just, I love all three of them. Um, so there, um, I'm going to include on the, in the description box below, uh, the link to an Amazon. Uh, it's a set. <clears throat> it has, uh, this gravity feeder right here, which I think is tremendous, tremendous. The uh, top is nice and large to, to ease it to fill. I fill from the bag itself. I don't use the scoop that comes with it. Um, the bowl is roomy enough and it's low enough so the cats can get in there. And when they eat out of this, the food drops down really, excuse me, really easily. There's lots of room, lots of space for that food to fall down into the bowl. This one, the food kind of jams at the bottom of the container and doesn't fall into the bowl easily as as easily as this one. Uh, so the the gravity feeder in this is just invaluable. Um, I this other one that I that I have I don't like it so much. I only keep it because I I put extra food in here and I put it. I don't even I don't even fill this anymore. I just put food in the bowl. It's just as a backup in case the two cats want to eat. Uh, two cats want to eat at the same time. Um, so I'm gonna put that set, which has the gravity feeder and the gravity water bowl. Uh, there's also a scoop, I think that comes with it, on um, in the link below. I think it's 30 bucks. I think it's $30 for the set. And um, you might find it something like it cheaper at Walmart or something, but I find this one to work really well. Um, blah, blah, blah. That's all I can really think of telling you guys uh, where my journey from having a pet uh, just having something living in my apartment from going from getting a scorpion, for example, into inadvertently becoming a cat daddy. Um, now, I have fallen, and I just told you I was going to stop talking. Um, I have fallen so in love with my cats that my, my apartment really is dedicated to my cats and their, and their comfort. It brings me joy to take care of them. And I also now... Uh, inadvertently have become sort of a cat daddy to some of the strays that live in my apartment complex. Diana, for example, and Bowtie, and um, Mystique, and there's a whole bunch of cats out there that I that I know and love. But uh, so if you're a flight attendant, especially a reserve flight attendant, you can make this work for your schedule, no problem whatsoever. Um, it, they just, it has been a, a, a breeze and it's been super rewarding. Um, so uh, I would go out and get yourself um, a couple cats. Go to the go to the um, rescue and look for siblings. Uh, and I would put just before I finish this, uh, the last thing I'll say is I would um, I would encourage people to go out and get older cats. Uh, I know that everyone wants kittens. I could not handle kittens only because um, they need a little bit more attention than I'm willing to give them. Um, I love them, they are adorable, but I would just, I couldn't handle that amount of activity. Um, I would encourage someone to maybe potentially go out and get uh, some older cats uh, who are a few years old, uh, potentially siblings or cats that are coming from the same, uh, the same situation or same scenario so that they already have a little bit of a head start in a relationship. But I would encourage you to get at least two cats potentially three. I find three to be perfect. All right, there you go. I have talked at length about this. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, leave something below in the description, in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer. And um, there you go. I hope that helps. Have a great day and fly safe.